everyone tells you the secret to success is to eliminate this habit and that habit. But I'm here to tell you that I want you to do all of your bad habits and reframe them to your advantage. So today, I'm going to show you eight bad habits you should do more often and why they aren't just important for success, but necessary. Number one, play video games to become rich. Playing video games increases gray matter in your brain, which is responsible for key skills that can make you rich, such as the fast processing of information or decision making. And don't just take my word for it. During a study published by ResearchGate, researchers assessed the impact of playing the piano versus playing video games on cognitive function. They divided 33 participants, ages 55 to 75, into two groups. One group learned to play the piano for 30 minutes a day, five times a week. The second group played Mario on Nintendo 64 for the same duration for a six month period. Following the study, cognitive tests and MRI scans proved that the group that played Mario on Nintendo had increased brain matter and better performance on short term memory. So. Here's how you maximize the benefits of playing video games yourself. First, you will limit playing video games, just like the study, between 20 and 30 minutes every day. Then, just like the study published in Nature, you will select video games that require high-level thinking and fast decision-making. These can be games as simple as Tetris. And now you realize, just after my first tip, you can use video games to your advantage. I'm just getting started. I got seven more bad habits that you can turn around and use to win. Starting with number two, I want you to party more to become a millionaire. You see, partying is not a bad thing when done correctly. You see, most men choose to use parties to drink and chase women, while the most elite men strategically select events and parties to go to where they know there is going to be a collection of successful people. The outcome? Group one remains poor and they both performed the same task. Parties are one of the best areas to gain access to these high level people. And don't just take my word for it. There was a study conducted by the Department of Psychology at Jeon Buk University. Researchers analyzed the connection between students' academic performance and who their peers were. What they found was not surprising. Those students who engaged and had peers who were high performing ended up being students that had higher academic performance both in school and in extracurricular activities. What this means is that when you surround yourself with high achieving individuals, it will have a positive impact in your own performance, even if you're just partying. First, I want you to go on LinkedIn and search for local events where successful people will show up. While there, you will have to make an effort and meet with as many people as possible. As soon as you get home, I want you to do a list of everyone you met and rank them from most successful to least successful. Now, you're not gonna offer them to buy them a free coffee or do free work for them because that is useless for them, especially if they're millionaire. Your best tactic is to study the person, what they do, and really find what they actually need in their lives. Then you will go away and try to do that work for free. And then you reach out with the project already completed. An individual did this with me recently, where I was looking for somebody to manage my Twitter. And lo and behold, somebody reaches out. And I'm telling you right now, this is the only way people will respond to you. And then you will send them that free work without them even asking. And you'll do it again and again and again, now you go from begging for attention to showing your value, I promise you, they will respond back. When you do this, you will capitalize on the law of reciprocity, which means people will feel obligated as if they owe you something because you did something beneficial for them. Do that 10 times at different events. You'll have a network, 10 to 30 millionaires who owe you a favor. Three, I want you to start comparing yourself more. Most men believe that comparison is the thief of joy this is wrong because when you do it correctly, it could propel you to become more successful. This is due to the social comparison theory that states what you want to do is upward comparison versus something like downward comparison. Upward comparison states that meeting physical standards of those that you admire that you look up to motivates you to meet those standards and therefore makes you more confident. The key therefore is to stop comparing yourself to your friends around you and envy them. Instead, Compare yourself to great men that you admire and would like to become. Then, you will use them as motivation to look better and be better. For example, say you wanted to look better. You will do upward comparison and find an individual that carries himself with confidence and looks like a male model. And when you do so, then you just need to find the products to get you there so you yourself start looking better. For example, for myself, there's three go-to products I'll never leave the house with. First, 
a good face wash that has salicylic acid. Research from the American Association of Dermatology found that just 2% of salicylic acid is more than enough to significantly reduce acne breakouts. This is a step I do every single morning with my Geology face wash that already has a 2% salicylic acid that cuts away that excess oil production. Next, a moisturizer, and specifically one that contains niacinamide, a skin moisturizing and anti-aging form of vitamin B. Why? Because it's been proven time and time again, for example, in this study, which was a 12-week study with individuals that had an average age of 50. After using 5% niacinamide for 12 weeks, they saw a significant reduction in wrinkles, fine lines, and discoloration, making your skin look perfect. So right before stepping out, I always put on that Geology Moisturizer to ensure that my skin's looking flawless. And lastly, prioritize eye care, as this is what people see first. Also the weakest area of your skin, which will wrinkle fast and age you quicker. Therefore, you want an eye cream that has some sort of retinol you will apply this after applying your moisturizer every single morning. Geology's eye cream, which is a hydrating one, which is an anti-aging formulation, has retinol built in. The point is that when you start upward comparisons and you wanna start looking better, you need to identify what is that person doing that's making him look so good, that's making him be better, and then you will replicate a similar routine for yourself. I'm not telling you to use the exact same products I use because my skin's different than yours. This is why I love geology, because with geology, you can go right now and take a skin quiz, see what your problems are, and they will help you solve this by creating a custom set specifically tailored for your needs. And to make it better, you get 70% off. You gotta make sure you don't spend too much money. So if you guys wanna check out geology, it'll be linked down below. Four, I want you to use more social media to increase your IQ. Social media is making history by turning teenagers into two things either millionaires or doom scrollers. So this is how you hack the algorithm so it can feed you information that's gonna make you smarter, not dumber. First, reset your preferred social media apps data. Then your first 10 follows will be people who you want to be. So you can start telling the algorithm the type of productive content you want to see. Now while scrolling, I want you to engage with productive posts by liking and commenting and quickly scroll past any girl that's twerking or throwing you off your focus. And finally, you will limit your social media usage to 15 minute bursts, as these platforms will optimize the most relevant content first, and then quickly introduce less relevant content to keep you engaged to make sure you don't get bored. That's how they trick you to stay longer on the app. So by stopping right at 15 minutes, you make the algorithm your slave and work for you, rather you becoming a slave to it. With these steps, you'll minimize the chances of getting distracted and optimize high quality information that will make you smarter. Five, arrive late to become more popular. Most people think that being late makes you less likable. They're wrong because being late will increase your sociometric status, which is the measurement of how much people like you. During a study published by Science Direct, researchers asked 100 females and 90 males with an average age of 38 to imagine that they were at college and that they were invited into a welcome party. The researchers then offered a few different scenarios of people arriving early, on time, and late. They then asked the participants to give their opinion of what they thought of each person. What the researchers found is that those that were in the late scenario were viewed as having a superior level of desirability and an increased sociometric status. So, this is how you use it to your advantage. When it comes to your first date, aim to arrive around five minutes late. This will increase anticipation in your date and will create eagerness for your attention when you arrive. For small gatherings with friends where they have someone you haven't met yet, you'll want to be around 15 minutes late. So they are talking about you before you even arrive. And for longer events, you can arrive up to 30 minutes late, long enough. So they're now calling you to see where you are so you can arrive. The women around them will see them call you and associate you with a higher level of desirability. Six. Sleeping in on the weekend to increase your lifespan. Waking up early is killing you. During one of the largest studies on sleep ever published, researchers created a cohort of 43,880 adults and then analyzed their sleeping pattern for over a 13 year period. They broke the sleeping patterns into three different categories. Those who slept less than five hours a night on weekends, those who slept more than nine hours, and then those who slept between five and nine hours every day. They found that those who slept less than five hours 
had a 52% higher mortality rate than those who slept more than five hours every night. But what was curious is that those who slept more than nine hours every night had no difference in mortality than those who just slept more than five hours every night. This is why I've told you before, you can do 18 hour days like I suggested for you in the Great Filter series. Sleep five and a half hours, six hours, and still be able to function. But this also means you are allowed to sleep in on the weekends to make up for any rest that you need to cover. And by doing so, you can decrease mortality by up to 52%. Now, you've turned your bad gaming habits to supercharge your brain. You've leveraged partying to learn how to network. You've learned how to compare yourself to others in a healthy and motivational way. You've tricked your social media to just deliver you knowledge and value. You've used your tardiness to increase your sociometric status. And now you've even reduced your mortality rate by sleeping in. But the two worst habits that everyone tells you to stop, but instead you should turn around and use to your advantage, still remain. Which takes me to number seven. Use movies to reach the top 1%. Everyone thinks that spending hours on Netflix is a bad thing. Here's how you use it to your advantage. See, when it comes to relaxing after work, what most men do is that you just spend hours on end on social media. This creates a negative feedback loop that keeps you addicted, less motivated, which keeps you back on the platform. Whereas if you want to be an elite man, I want you to use non-addictive motivational movies. So to relax, replace social media with films that motivate you, such as biographical films on finance, like The Social Network, The Founder, and The Big Short. All three movies I recommend anyone that wants to crush it in business. You'll be ready for the most powerful habit that everyone thinks is a bad thing, but I'm gonna show you how to use it to your advantage. Number eight, use Tinder to overcome your fear of women. Exposure therapy involves overcoming a fear by repeatedly facing that fear in a controlled environment. And according to research from the American Psychology Association, it has been scientifically proven to help eliminate fear and anxiety. And what is the biggest fear that men have? Talking to women. According to data, 75% of men report being too afraid of approaching a woman. So here's how you're gonna use your habit of swiping on Tinder as exposure therapy to eliminate your fear of women. First, you will use Tinder as you normally do. You will match, you will swipe with as many people as possible to increase your matches. Then your challenge is that you will ask every single one of them for their number or to go on a date in a very unique way. You cannot use the same line. The key is to experience rejection as often as you can so you can stop associating your value with the opinions of the opposite sex. You will then reframe your rejection as a method to improving your strengths and not as weakness. And as you try different lines, you will start seeing what works and what doesn't work. And you will no longer be afraid to talk to women and take risks. By doing this, along with every other bad habit people tell you to stop, you will instead keep doing them, but use them to your advantage. And if you wanna to continue to level up, I'm gonna leave you two more videos here that you can watch. See you next time.